the title of this podcast is I don't need to know your story. This I've been thinking about this for a long time, um, this topic. And finally, you know, I've chosen to do a podcast on it now. Uh, and what it I'll, I'll tell you where it came from. It came from uh, this commitment not to confuse people's behavior with who they are, to not allow my preferences or my judgments or my mind's preferences and judgments to dictate how I show up and how I treat people. It's come from that. It's, it's come from being non-negotiable about my commitment to keep an open heart and be loving and kind to everyone, regardless of who they are. And that's where it comes from. So back in many years before the practice, for me to be compassionate and open, uh, maybe even loving to someone, I had this thing that, that that had to occur first. It was almost like it had to pass through this, this checkpoint for me to do those things if I didn't know you. And that was, I need to know your story. So there may have been something that I would have, I probably would have not been sensitive to someone or I would have complained or been rude to, not, I wouldn't be rude, but I probably would have complained about someone. And then somebody would have told me their backstory and then I would have shifted, you know, it's like, oh, oh, OK, OK. You know, oh, I didn't know that, you know, and then inside I would say, oh, I got to treat them. I got to treat them better than what I did. So once someone could say, hey, listen, you know, um, this person here, like, I don't know if you know it, but, you know, they had a tragic situation happen, you know, uh, and before they would have told me that I may have like made a judgment about this person, like. You know, we don't vibe together or it's not somebody I would have in my friend circle or whatever. And then they would or this person didn't say hello to me. I said hello back to them. Like, who doesn't say hello or thank you after someone does a kindness for them? And they would have said, hey, listen, I don't know if you know it, but so and so over here, you know, uh, they're having they're, they're having a health a health issue right now. Like, oh, 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 OK. Oh, I, I didn't know that because I said hello to them. You know, I didn't know that they, you know, they had something else heavy on their mind. It'd be something like that. Or I could say something like uh, there's just, there was a, a situation that happened many years ago, a personal situation in which I had a very, very close friend and we're still we're, we're best friends now. And we were really, really close back then. But there was a period in which he pulled away. And when I say pulled away, we were talking a couple of times a week, making uh, a, a, a mutual effort to hang out with each other, either at lunch or something like that a couple of times a month. And then all of a sudden it stopped. Like I would send emails about stuff and, Hey, I know you're busy. You know, can you get back to me about this? And, uh, and crickets, like no response. And this went on for about a year, but we always had an annual trip that vacation trip that we would take together with a few other guys. And so one year we took this trip and one of the guys came and uh, a new guy that I introduced him to. And it was, it was, you know, we all hit it off, all great guys, positive. So after the trip, this new guy that I introduced my best friend to was telling me, hey, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, this, you know, this, my best friend invited him over for dinner. He and his wife were for dinner. I'm like, what? Invited? Inside, I'm saying this. I'm like, oh, that's cool on the outside. But inside, I'm like, what? How would he invite you for dinner? Like, seriously? Like, I've been trying to, like, we haven't hung out in over a year and he's not even returning my phone calls. He meets you for like a three day ski trip. And now you guys going out. I mean, literally, I sound like like this, this, this jealous person. Right. Like, I didn't know who I was behaving like this. But I was again, the mind doesn't need it doesn't need a reason to fall back into its default settings. Right. It just it just does. And I don't know. I have to uncover it, dig a little deeper about where that was coming from. But clearly I was suffering and bothered by it. So I was like, it's cool, whatever. And it kept moving on. But I could feel myself closing my heart to my best friend. I felt like I was not being replaced. I just felt like I thought our friendship was, was bigger than that. I thought we were tighter than that. It's cool. So fast forward, a year passes. And my best friend calls me. And I am really uh, late in returning the call. Like he called me like over an email he, and then he followed up with email. And this was over a two day, two day period. 
And then the third email he sent, because he, it took three, because I didn't respond to the previous two. He said, I know you're super busy and I've seen the way that you've shown up for people over the years uh, and I need you right now. And I, you know, I was like, OK, I'm waiting for it. And I didn't respond. You know, I said, I respond to this in the morning. I got the email pretty late at night. The next day passes. Uh, and I wake up that morning at like 3.30 in the morning, getting ready for the day. And there's another email. Oh, Keith, also, I want to apologize to you for not showing up to you as a friend over the last year. I really, really need you. Can you, you know, you're one of the people that can help me. So we meet up and at like 10.30 at night, the meeting take, you know, we're meeting like for two hours for him to share with me what was going on. And what happened was he was going through a really significant um, challenge in his personal life, in his family life. And as soon as he told me that, I felt compassion and empathy for what he was going through. And I accepted his apology, of course. And I look back on that event and I had needed to know the story before I could be open and loving to my best friend. Like, really? No, you don't. You know, there could be people in, like, I don't, I don't want to be that person that needs to know somebody's story for me to be loving and compassionate. I don't want to know it, you know? And, uh, and, and, and so that's really, really been helpful uh, for me to th reflect back on that. Uh, I've got to the point now with the practice that I don't, I don't need to know, you know, I don't have to think and reflect back on this situation that happened many years ago with my best friend to apply it to situations that happen now with people. No, I just, I've had enough practice now that I don't need to know anyone's story. I show up as loving and kind, regardless of how they show up um, because I wanted to make that like breathing for me. And, and with the practice, it uh, continues to be that way. Unless with more practice, it continues to be that way. So, uh, but that was a, that was a significant event for me. And it was a mirror of myself. So when things happen now and someone may share something with me about a person, I was like, oh, oh no, you, you don't, you don't have to tell me that. Like, I don't feel my, I don't feel my heart open up uh, uh, even more because somebody shares a backstory with me. No, my heart is wide open to start with. It's one of those things about trusting people, you know, where some people make you prove, prove to them that you're, that they, that they can trust you before they are open and vulnerable. You don't have to do that with me. I'm going to trust you, period, like whoever you are. And, and, and regarding Eckhart Tolle said it better about whether or not you can trust human beings. What you can trust about human beings is you can trust them based on their current level of consciousness in this moment. So people that are, you know, being mean spirited, not being loving and kind with what they say to other people, not being inclusive. If that's their current level of consciousness, that's what I can trust that their behavior will more than likely be aligned with that. But that's their path. My path is to continue to be loving and kind in the face of their behavior being that way and not to confuse their behavior with who they are. So I've gone through, you know, a lot of this about whether or not uh, I need to know someone's, you know, story to be loving and kind to, you know, all of humanity. And I don't. And so I encourage you with people in your lives, you know, uh, whether it is a loved one who you feel is not loving and kind or they withheld love and connection for you or they treated you a certain way. You don't need to know the backstory, you know, to keep an open heart to those people in your life. You don't need to like just show up as being kind period. It's so easy. The easiest thing to do is just be kind. And I'll do another podcast on that as well. So um, with that, you know, I just encourage you to uh, lead with an open heart and not need to know someone's story before you're open to them, uh, period. And that goes along, you know, all things, where they're from, uh, what they believe, um, how how other people have told you that they behaved or whatever the case may be. Now, obviously you want to be safe, but that's different than using your judgments 
or needing to know something about a person before you treat everybody with kindness. It doesn't mean you have to be their best friend, but those things. So I don't need to know that someone's, you know, that we share the same biological race for me to like really let them in to my inner circle. No, I'm letting everybody in, in terms of me having an open heart, period. I don't care who you are, what color you are, what gender you are, what, what your gender identity is or no gender identity, doesn't matter. Like I am committed to this, you know, it's just like with, 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 I'm being unconditional period, non-negotiable. So again, uh, you don't need to do any one story to be loving, kind and lead with an open heart. Thank you.